Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, Stormers versus the Sharks. And uh, what an important game this is for a Shark side that have been struggling. A Shark side which are just not quite hitting their straps. And it's difficult to understand exactly why they're not hitting their straps. But at the end of the day, the main thing is that they actually can't afford to really slip up too many more times or else their position in that URC top eight and qualifications for the Champions Cup next season will be in jeopardy. And they go against the Stormers, who are currently in red-hot form, um, sitting second in the log. By far, quite clearly, the second-best team in the side after Leinster. And uh, there's nothing to sniff at there. Leinster have been the side's, you know, gold standard for, for many a year. Continue to be so. I mean, they are basically, you know, sort of 80% of the best team in the world right now in Ireland. Uh, so you can't expect them to be where they are. So for the Stormers to be the next best, pretty impressive showing. And a couple of interesting selections. Obviously, no spring marks still involved in this weekend's clash. They will be involved moving forward, but uh, as they complete their two-week uh, training camp. Before we look at the squads, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. In terms of the lineups, we'll start with the home side, which is the Stormers. A couple of changes, adding from Mark, starting in uh, loose head. Joseph Dreber coming uh, into the, the, the starting hooker berth as well. I thought Joseph Dreber was very impressive when he came on last week. Obviously, we know that there are a couple of line of inefficiencies that he needs to sort out, and I think he is working very hard on that. His defense last week, last week I thought, or well, last time they were out, was, was absolutely... I mean, that, there was that period where the Bulls, I think, went through about 19 to 20 fa phases, and um, I think, you know, in that time, he, he, just, he doesn't get moved backwards. Uh, so I was really impressed with him, and really good to see him playing with that confidence and that physicality, which we've known from him. Dedele Bashir, very underrated, tight head. And I think, uh, to be fair, underrated, I have, it's, taking, it's taking me a long while to, to, to warn him. I thought that he struggled a bit uh, at the beginning of the season, even but last season, but I think now it's really starting to come into his own. Uh, in the second row, Ernst von Rain comes with the starting lineup, and Ruben van Heerden shifts to the number five uh, lock. It gets to a lot of work, does Ruben van Heerden. Um, Dion Ferry, Master Tennyson have got a new flank partner in Ben Jason Dixon, and I've actually been calling... Uh, for Ben Jason Dixon to get some more game time because I've been incredibly impressed with uh, his work rate when he's come on. Uh, I mean, I think that my early shot is watch out for him and he'll probably complete 17 to 18 tackles at least this weekend. Uh, he's everywhere on, on defense. And again, a very nice defensive presence. Maybe not the ball carry that everybody would like, you know, traditional number seven to be able to be, but uh, uh, not that he's bad ball carry, but just I think defensively he's so good. Paul DeBeck gets a start next to Money Leibach. Uh, Sibelius, Natal, Angela, Davis, Clayton, Blomicky, that is pace on pace on pace on flair on pace in that back three. Dan Dubasi, we will now continue their center partnership. I've been enjoying themselves, so their rugby together, and I'll be interested to see uh, who sort of gives way when Damien Phillips does come back, whether he does slot back into that number 12 jersey, uh, which we imagine he stop, but you do have to then feel for Dan Dubasi, who's been playing some very good rugby uh, over there. Yeah, off the bench, Roger Kotzer makes his return. Brock Harris, Sadi Sandy, it's a nice front row to be able to bring on. Connor Evans, Villa Engelbrecht. Uh, the remaining two uh, forward replacements. Herschel Yankees after a very impressive game. Does drop down to the bench. She'll be coming on as an impact player next to the likes of Sasha Feinberg, Gomazulu, and Simon Hartzenberg. So the two youngsters also will be making their appearances off the bench. If we look at the shark side, quite a few changes um, in, in various positions. Well, I think key changes. In the, in the, in the starting lineup, we do see that Ntuk Antunu drops down to the bench. And Dion Blula will get an opportunity to start next to Fez and Barter, who's also found game time. Quite difficult to come by lately, and uh, he will get an opportunity. And Hanno Jakobs, who I thought, I think he played about 80, 72, 73 minutes last weekend, got through a really big shift. I uh, was quite impressed with him, actually. Uh, Emil van Heerden comes to the starting line next to Cabrant Krobler. Henko Fenton, the number six, is a very interesting decision. We usually see him in the number seven jersey, which is occupied by Vincent Stuka. I reckon they, they will probably, um, you know, share the sort of the work uh, of the various sort of roles. And then Tukin Buzinoche. Get to start with Pepsi Boot Lazy dropping down to the bench. Um, and I think that the Sharks are very much looking for a, an impact in the second half. You look at some of the players they can bring on. But I've been really impressed with Super and I think he's been wasted just coming off the bench for sort of 15 minute cameos. Grant Williams, Kern Bosch continue their um, sort of combination. Kern Bosch actually captaining the side this weekend. After the fascinating back into the side and on the wing. And I, I just think that if he's going to play spring marks, wing is probably where he's going to, it's going to be. Um, I do think that defensively, he's still question marks around him. Um, and I don't think that playing him on the wing is going to do him any harm. Um, a lot of people don't agree. A lot of people say that he has to be at fullback. I think if you can get him involved 
on the wing a lot. I think he's, he's plenty he can bring to the game. In the centres, right now, it's from Rensburg. Minus Porquito, they've got with two hard-hitting centres there, so I think they're definitely going to give uh, Daniel Psy and Ronal a lot of grief. Werner Koch in the 14, Buddha Chamberlain as a second playmaker in that 15 jersey. Karen from Furen, in Fuku, Kluno, and Carly Sardi, a very competent and powerful reserve front row to come off. Lapis, Lapis, Kakni, James Fenter, Pepsi, Boot, Lazy, and a 6-2 split with Cameron Wright and Yao Penkley. Um, a couple of my players, you know, that's what Williams can go into the wing. Buddha Chamberlain can obviously slot into uh, uh, 10. Uh, Werner Koch can go into outside center. So they've got lots of sort of versatility in their starting backs, which is why you can name a wing on the bench in a 6-2 split. Um, Cameron Wright, the reserve scrum hop there. Uh, I, I, I expect Stormers to win, but uh, the Sharks needed more. So maybe that sort of desperateness, maybe that sort of uh, despair of, of potentially missing out on the semi-final spot and the pressure of being known as a side that can only play when their spring box are around might really kick these guys into gear and get a result. So let me know who you're backing in the comments below. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Stephen. I'll chat to you soon.